Hello everyone, it's Quest Crunches here today, and I want to talk about Starfield. Specifically, I want to talk about the Rev 8 vehicle, and how I now understand why they didn't put vehicles into the game. Now, first of all, I think they didn't put game uh, the vehicles into the game, is because, honestly, I don't need it. I really don't need it. When you sort of get into the groove of it, maybe maybe when you're first starting, yeah, a vehicle would be very useful after you leave Atlantis and been to the Lodge. Uh, and you go explore your first couple of, you know, places. But after you sort of end up, oh, I could just uh, click on the main screen, press X to go to the uh, my objective location and fast travel straight there, cutting out a lot of loading screens. So that seems where the issue is. It's the loading screens and spending time within loading screens. Because if you decide to go, hey, I'm going to do all the, this all manually. I'm going to run back to my ship after being the lodge. I'm going to fly to Mars, which is a grab jump loading screen to Mars. I'm going to then locate the Sidoni landing pad. Okay, I'll land there. That's great. I've landed there. I'm going to get out and I'm going to walk to a path to Sidonia. Okay, say you're doing the, uh, the the mission where you need to rescue Walker, I think his name is. Not walk, not rescue him, but like, you know, make sure he's okay after paying off his debt. So you come out to Sidonia and then you would use that vehicle. And I was like, great, this is, this is an appropriate time to use it. So I used it gone in it drove all the way like about maybe two minutes it's faster than running uh, so but if you have a power up that's like personal atmosphere you could just sprint and it's probably a little bit slower than the vehicle but it you get there and you don't have to turn off your sprint you could just sprint straight there and that's about it whereas with the vehicle it is slightly fun you get to listen to the noise you get to you know bump around on objects and stuff and it's quite fun but that, that doesn't last, unfortunately, very quickly because after that, you've got your fast travel points and then you kind of lose the fast travel points. I mean, not lose them. I mean, but that's all you do. You just use the fast travel points to skip loading screens because you don't want to be sitting there in a loading screen for a little bit. So it doesn't, it doesn't particularly work and I can see why Bethesda didn't include vehicles. I imagine they wanted to, but then they were like, we're just loading and that's how people get into it. So why would people, unless there was like a, uh, a hardcore mode where you couldn't fast travel or anything, you could only fast travel within a ship or something, but then it's like, we're not going to include that really. So we may as well not include the vehicles. And, and that's where I think that's why they scrapped him because they weren't particularly useful. Especially when you got the personal atmosphere, you could just sprint to, and you're on a planet, you could just sprint to the locations you want to go to. But again, the locations are copy and pasted around the worlds that you visit. And so it, it could add just with a different type of like, oh, instead of red texture for Mars, it's now a green foliage texture for New Atlantis. So again, it uh, that's why we didn't need vehicles, and I understand that now. I mean, it, if the system was different and vehicles were more like, yeah, this is how you get from A to B. You know, you can. There's not as many loading screens and stuff like that. Uh, vehicles would be like, yes, they must have. They must have, and then we can also have a no fast travel thing that you can only fast travel within your ship and stuff like that. So, yeah, I can see why vehicles would have been useful then, but with how Starfield is designed now, it, it we don't really need them. Like, I started playing again, and I played and played and played, did quest and quest, and then I realized I only used the Rev 8 about maybe three times, and that was it. So... After, you know, seeing this, I, I do appreciate him doing it to appease some people that probably do play that way, that don't get sick and tired of loading screens and doesn't they don't want to immerse themselves from seeing the same thing on the same planet. Somehow they're okay with that. I would get... The, the vehicle would be okay, I guess. But because Starfield isn't like that, to me it seems like a waste of time making it, unfortunately. 
But maybe it's... I was going to say maybe it's something they could use in the later games, but the next game is going to be the Elder Scrolls. So uh, that doesn't really have vehicles in it unless you like maybe carriages. Uh, but then you may as well just have a single horse and use the horse system, which it probably is using anyway. So it's a bit... I, I feel like they might have wasted some time making the Rev 8 instead of just, you know, fixing the, uh, the loading issues. I think there's too many loading screens and you need to figure out a way to, you know, ease that loading screen all the time. Maybe some some way to uh, stream data indifferently. Uh, but that's like a whole engine kind of redo kind of thing. And uh, yeah, I think it's just load screen after load screen after load screen. And then the opportunities for quests don't take you to places, a lot of places that you don't take you and you don't need a vehicle to travel a certain distance. So it's just like, yeah, I don't see the point in having it. So <laughs> it, uh, even though, you know, they did like, okay, people want vehicles, we'll give them a vehicle. But uh, now we have a vehicle, I can see why they said, oh, you don't need, there's, you know, the jetpacks are better. And they are in a way for like traversal combat and stuff like that. But when it comes to like, you know, it's just that it doesn't really get you the distance, the jetpack. You may as well just sprint with personal atmosphere upgraded and you get to where you are and then just keep spamming that until you reach there. Uh, but after, again, after you've been to those places so many times and you've seen all the prefabs for them, like 20 prefabs or something, you don't kind of want to do that anymore. So you you don't want to explore worlds because you've seen it all before and it's a bit repetitive. Like, same enemies, same things. So it's just like, it's a shame that they really should focus on expanding the prefabs to make the vehicle be used. So, and there also needs to be like, oh, so we generated this world, generated this map. It had this, 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 and this, this, these sort of prefabs here. Note them. The next planet that the player goes to will not encounter these prefabs. And that's what the system should do. And it should generate it, and then it's like, oh, they've been that one, we'll, you know, and perhaps you might encounter the same sort of similar thing. Or you could either do like a, you know, a cell that plate that has sort of different, you know, kind of like, what do you call them? Cells. So a cell you go into, and then it has different like places that mix together. So say like the entry of this place can match with another entry, with the midsection, and then a back end thing. And let's say like there's 15 of each source. So there's like uh, the entry point has 15 designs, the middle, and then that could attach to the next 15 designs of like the middle combat area or whatever, cave system, whatever. And they all can interlock pretty easily. And then that also locks into the same place on the third end, which loops back around to the front end. So it's just like you just have to, or oh, you don't even do that. Just get, you just run back through it. And they, I think they should have done that so they could have, like, so you have 15, like I said, 15 beginner uh, entry cells, and then 15 middle cells, and then 15 end cells. And you sort of, like, mix and match every time you go into a new prefab place. So most places are going to be underground, because, like, if you're on planets, maybe you want to be underground. Just, you know, protect yourself from the fauna, the radiation from the sun, and all that stuff. I think it would have worked better. And you have maybe some, you know, like, maybe you know, 50 outside sort of prefab regions that can be, you know, on the globe that you can encounter. So you can but combine that system together. You can make it like a really cool dungeon experience, a really cool open world experience that you could encounter. Uh, but because they didn't do that, I could definitely see that why, you know, that's why it loses that level of exploration. Even though it's randomly generated, you're seeing new things all the time. Because it's, you know, 15 new front cells, middle cells, and back cells. So, uh, yeah, I think it would work really well, that kind of system. But unfortunately, they didn't do it. So, therefore, again, it takes away from the explanation. Oh, oh this this is mixed with this, and this is mixed with this. This is great. Um, but unfortunately, that doesn't work like that. So, it doesn't encourage exploration anymore. Because once you've encountered all the cells... Uh, well, all the locations and stuff. You don't particularly want to count them all over again and see everything all the time. And as well as the enemies tend to be the same. Or they might just be like, oh, instead of 
Crimson Fleet pirates, they're ecliptic mercenaries, and they still uh, have the same areas. <laughs> so it's just like, yeah, they really didn't think this through when it came to dungeons. But it's funny because they did do it in like Daggerfall, where it generated a random dungeon and did it really well. So I'm guessing they must have lost that technology or because they couldn't figure it out how to properly put all these maps together. Uh, or like, oh, how do we generate cells and stuff like that? They couldn't come up with a system. Maybe it's the limitation of the engine. Uh, or they just don't have that experience of like coding and stuff like that. So yeah, uh, but I think because of, you know, because of the dungeons and stuff and because the exploration is fairly boring, that's why the vehicle doesn't work. And I think that's why they didn't do it. So yeah, that's kind of like my idea about the video. I've been using the Rev uh, Rev 8 for a little bit, as well as the, the mod, the hauler. Um, and it's just like, yeah, I don't really see the point in it. And then I just continue to do it because I, I uh, went through the uh, Unity and I started all the quests again and doing all that stuff. And uh, I started off using it. And then eventually I was just fast traveling to locations and uh, sort of getting, you know, uh, stuff and doing quests. And then I'm like... I haven't used my vehicle in ages, <laughs> so it's like I'm not really, not really interested in using it, unfortunately, because there isn't that need to use that system, or or anything like that. So it's unfortunate. So yeah, that's sort of my analysis of this uh, Rev Eight now, the new the vehicle they've introduced. That it's ultimately pointless because I don't use it, because. Why would I want to use it? Because the game doesn't encourage any use of it. Uh, and it's literally just like, but there's no like plugging it into, uh, you know, compensating your ship, changing your ship around to have a vehicle bay. And there isn't that animation when you land and your vehicle rolls out of it. It just spawns there. It's just like, it's been added really. There's, there's no nuance. There's no like, oh, that's cool. And there's only one vehicle. There's no different things so it's just like yeah why it's uh it's been added with minimal effort and uh, yeah you've got a car working and stuff like that that's great it's fantastic but we don't need it because of how the game is <laughs> so yeah but i really want him to sort of try and think now like oh we've got it in we've depleted it now next time when we have a big story so after shattered space they need to sort of make the system a little bit more interesting and more useful. So, but I think they might not do it because Starfield, I feel, is kind of done. And I know they've said like, oh, we want all these yearly things for it, but I don't think the, uh, I don't think the game's what it should have been. And I don't think it's there. I don't think there's the audience is there. Uh, like, yeah, I've gone back and I'm playing it a bit, but I'm just like, of course. I don't really want to play it. And all the content they're adding is behind a, a paywall uh, in the creations. That's like proper, you know, quests and stuff. And it also disables achievements. So, I mean, I think they've changed it now, but it did. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of not really interested because it's just like, oh, it's a... You know, it's you just got to be bought in a bunch of cool things behind paywalls now. And I don't like that aspect of Starfield anymore. And it's really making me not want to play it at all. Uh, so, yeah, I, uh, that's that's all from me now. Yeah, it's a bit of a sad video about Starfield and and its vehicles that, yeah, we don't need them. Now, if you would have said, do we need mechs? That might be a different story. If we were big enough to go through doors and stuff like that into different cells yeah maybe advanced power armor suits something like that that would be cool it would change it up a little bit so making you making you more of an astartes character warhammer character <laughs> but other than that it's it's difficult because even if you add like big mech suits out in the wild you need to make sure it has a useful component that there are things you can do with it whereas the vehicle it doesn't operate really great in zero g or below one or anything like that uh like very below one and it's just like yeah i don't know why he didn't just add a rocket scooter or something like that uh but yeah i just think it's poorly implemented and it's fairly 
they're fairly boring, unfortunately. And useless. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's uh, that's kind of my two cents on the vehicles. After playing it for a while, I played uh, quite, you know, uh, I've I completed the uh, the UNSC quests with the Terramors, then I completed the, um, what do you call it? The Free Star Rangers quest, and I was like, yeah, <laughs> I didn't I didn't use the bloody thing. Uh, and then the main quests and stuff like that, and it's just like, yeah. Uh, I forgot that I had that for a while until I saw it vibrating on a landing pad, and it got flung, and I was like, oh, okay. That's been properly uh, looked at. <laughs> Q&A, you know, not Q&A. Uh, play through and you know it's it's a bit annoying anyway that's all from me i'll see you in the next one take care of yourselves bye bye bye